So let's start off with life lessons of a financial analyst. Winners outperform their peers just a little bit every day. You don't have to be miles better than your peers. Just be a bit better. And over time, your value will grow more significantly than theirs. A second one is valuing a company is 70% forecasting and 30% valuation. The hardest part of valuing a business is correctly predicting its future. Your next step is much easier once you've got that. That is to apply valuation formulas to these forecasts. That's why I say a good valuation can never overcome a bad forecast. If you get the forecast wrong, it doesn't matter how cool your spreadsheets are and how awesome your understanding of a discounted cash flow are, you're still going to be wrong. Welcome everybody to Feedback Friday. This is the chance to get feedback on the work that you're doing this week. And I know you guys have been working hard, so I'm looking forward to it. All right. Outlook for next week. Congratulations, you made it through the first half of the boot camp. But be prepared for the second half because you're going to be crawling on your knees like Brock Kelly. It isn't easy. You're going to deepen your valuation knowledge and use our tools. You're going to learn about our world class benchmarking tool and our FVMR tool. You're going to learn how to forecast the liability side of the balance sheet and learn how to deal with equity and understand the plugs in the Excel model. You're going to apply absolute valuation methods and you're going to continue on with the valuation on your final report. And this week, you already got access to the value model. You're going to get individual feedback on your PL forecast. And next week, you're going to work on the balance sheet. Also, you're going to work on story two and story three of your report. So story one is now done or close to it. We've got story two and story three next. After finishing your PL, it should be the time for the balance sheet. You can see here in the model by Thursday, you'll be able to forecast the whole balance sheet. Now, remember, you want to review the checklist. We spend a lot of time to pull these checklists together for you and I highly recommend printing this out and keeping it next to you as you work on the companies. Now you can find the checklist on the learning platform. It's right in there and it's under balance sheet checklist and then balance sheet. So in week four, you still got a lot of videos you're going to be watching. Plus, on Monday, I'll do a little introduction to Valuation Masterclass Professional, and we'll have some other stuff we go over. You've got your live plus team meeting on Tuesday, and then you got feedback Friday. So um, LVMH has five major revenue uh, generating divisions. Uh, with the largest being fashion and leather goods, accounting for almost 50% of their revenue. Uh, the wines and spirits have shrunk to uh, 8%. It's presently the smallest of all the divisions, uh, declining by uh, almost 7% in 2023 compared to others, raising questions about the strategic position of uh, in LVMH future about the division. Uh, the revenues are uh, geographically now, the revenues are well balanced uh, with no risk exposure to any uh, region in particular. Uh, Asia has the largest with 31% and 50% uh, revenue equally between uh, US and Europe. They have 25% each. Japan with 7% uh, and the rest of the world with 12%. LVMH prides itself in organic growth, uh, but uh, uh, the growth largely has been due to major acquisitions of uh, established brand and revenue growth has slowed down post COVID. There was a sharp, I uh, will see that there was uh, a peak in 2021, but it has come down and uh, it has averaged out 2022 and uh, 2023. Uh, the chairman concerning the future uh, revenue growth. The chairman speculates that it's going to be 8 to 10% revenue growth in 2024. Uh, however, I believe it's going to normalize at 8% as uh, the industry growth for the luxury good has plateaued post-pandemic. There was a, a high growth in uh, this industry, but 
uh, after, I think towards the end of 2023, we saw all the revenue growth just average out. And the revenue have been consistent uh, from the uh, from the regions. Looking at the last two quarters of 2023, and I believe the growth will just grow steadily into the future. And below, we can see the breakdown by uh, the segment and the regions. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, a couple of things. This is good, but I want to see some um, improvement. I feel like this final uh, paragraph can probably be cut out because it's talking about the future and it's talking about the you know chairman's expectations, your expectations. But that doesn't really matter so much when we're talking about a revenue breakdown. We're just trying to understand what is this company? How does it generate revenue? So um, I think you could add in some stuff related to um, some of the brands, for instance, like you're not mentioning, you know, any brands here. It's just like, here's the groupings. I thought that this was, you know, interesting to start off with the biggest and kind of the smallest and that the smallest is getting smaller. So I like that. I think that that caught my attention. So that was, that was good. Um, the other thing is, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I can't really see what this chart says. Uh, and so you have to always be careful when you copy things out of the company's information because it was good for the company to present in that way, but it may not be suitable in this case. So I think you may end up just making either a bar chart or just a, uh, a chart or a table of, of that instead. Um, I, don't, I can't see this one very well, so I wasn't really sure what that was. Um, so anyways, that's some of the um, comments for Momen and, and Prao. I just have to admit that this is far better than the one I saw yesterday. <laughs> so well done. Uh, you did a great job. I just have a couple of things to mention. As Andrew said, like the last one is talking about the future. So this could be added to your stories, not here in the revenue breakdown. Maybe you need to focus on the... Um, you know, the percentages you have below or maybe the main brands, what is like the main generating uh, revenue across all of the, the, uh, the brands and so on. The other thing is uh, in the blue line in the middle where it says revenue breakdown by segment and region, you just capitalized the or in region and, you know, only. So I think you need to just make it a small letter to keep it consistent. Um, otherwise, I think, you know, Andrew said it all. Just to try to explain, you know, let us know how this company makes money. That's it. All right. Thank you. All right. Prayo? Um, no, no, no addition. You are yeah. in the Okay. No problem. Um, one last thing just to show is that given that wine and spirits is not as critical or that you could cut that out and then that gives you a little bit more space. You could move these up a little bit, right? And then that gives you just a little bit more space for the pictures. If you can get this down to be a table that's only that size, then you've, you've opened up this whole amount of space to get bigger pictures that really convey you know exactly what you want to say also one last thing is um i think most people who don't understand the business won't understand what selective retailing is in fact some of you guys may not really understand what it is yet so that could be a topic that you also mentioned 21 percent is selective retail and that's these type of shops or whatever so some ideas all right Thank you. Yep. Thank you.